Hi, Anthony here. I'm doing a video on accessing components from a C Sharp script. Now, it's a little bit of a follow on from last week's video, but it's not necessary to watch that to proceed. But if you want to, here's a link up here. Anyway, what I'm going to do is add some components to some game objects, and then I'm going to use my C Sharp script to then alter these components. And I'm going to show you some tricks and tips on how I do it and what I do when I'm accessing these components via script. It's really easy to do, so let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a new game object to this scene and when this dot comes across, it's going to hit it and we're gonna change some of the components with script after the dot hits the um, box that we're making here. So I've got the box, I just have to move it here into the actual game scene. It's in the, it's hiding behind the UI here. Okay, so here it is. Um, then what we'll do to that, I think we'll change the color of it. How about we make it maybe a yellow or something? Um, and then we'll have to add our box collider to it. So obviously with, when it hits, it'll be able to sense it. The box collider's got a trigger on it. And then we're adding a collider to the actual dot. But I mucked this up when I did it in the last video. So I can't actually add it because I'm adding a, a 2D collider to a 3D um player movement thing so I've had to change some of the script here if you're following on from last week but it's not really that important it's now it's a 2d um, dot so when it moves across um, I'll, I'll be able to have a circle collider on it and it'll hit this um, box collider and then we'll be able to make stuff happen anyway that's just a little bit of what's going on in this scene so then you can that we're going to the, the part after this where stuff um, happens. So when the box collider hits, it's going to print up the top here um, what object hit it. Just so do a quick subscribe while we're waiting for this dot to hit. I'm going to speed this up. Subscribe. Um, and yeah, it, it had that. So how do we access a component through code? And... If you think about when you're doing a file, you use user file and you search game object. Well, this is kind of simple, similar what you do in the code to actually get to your component. You've got your component, then you've got your dot. And for this, in this example, I'm going to put enabled and um, I'm going to put false. And what that would do is if I had the sprite renderer and I went through to enabled it false, it would actually um, turn that component off. So that's just one example. So it's basically component.thing. So any, com see the top one there, how that's, that would become false if we did this, the line of code that I was talking about just previously. But it's basically component.sprite, component.color, component.flip, component.draw mode. And then you access, that's how you're accessing any component in script. We're using the sprite renderer as the component in this thing, but this works for everything else as well. And then you can change the sprite. It should be um, to equals new sprite. Color equals new color. So you'll see this when we go across into the code, exactly what I mean. But this is... Basically, you've got to think of it more of a, a filing system or something like that as the easiest way to describe what we're doing here. Um, and this might be not exactly a C-sharp way of thinking, but it's it's a Unity kind of way of thinking. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two variables up here. One's going to be a sprite, and we'll call it box. And the other one's going to be a uh, public color. They're both public, so we can add the components in Unity. It just makes it easier to see what's happening here. Um, 
we will go down, we'll delete our print because we know that the collision system's working fine. And then that's not going to work. We're going to have to add a, another public variable at the top here and we'll call it a sprite renderer. And that is actually the component. That's what this whole video is around, this component part. So we'll call it this component. And then down here, when the collision happens, we're going to have this component and the sprite. And then we can put box. And that will change the component sprite to the box. And then you have the component and we're going to have the color and we can change the color also. Which we'll, I'm actually going to change this to new color and new box just so just so you can see it a little bit easier. It probably makes a little bit more sense now. And when we go over to Unity now, we click on our box script and you see we've got our variables there. And so then we can go and drag a sprite that I've got down into there and we're going to change the color to red. So it's going to swap from yellow to red and I've got a new sprite that it's going to implement once it has the collision also. And I'm also going to add the sprite renderer, which is part of the box. So I'm just dragging the box down onto the sprite renderer. That's the component right there. But it's finding it when I drag the box down onto it. So that's all the bits that are going to change. Let's have a look what happens here. Hit play and hit our button and across, bang. Whoa, that's a bit bigger than I want it to be. That sprite was like literally... <laughs> five times, 10 times bigger than the first sprite. So that's not gonna work for this. Um, so we might just readjust some things here. And so it's gonna be a bit smaller and probably easier to understand what's happening. It's, there it is. Um, have to readjust the collider also to make everything work still. Now, um, I've decided I don't want to use the, the change the sprite anymore. So we're going to get rid of that. But then what we can do in it is we go to this component and then we can go flip X and then we can go equals true. And guess what's going to happen when it goes now? Well, we'll have a look in Unity it's going to flip that, so it's going to hit that in the, the script. And here we go. Bang, and it flips it that way. So that's a pretty cool thing. Another thing that you can do via the code, it, all these things are accessible by the code, all these components are accessible by the code. You've just got to access them. But what about if you want to access the other game object that hits it in the collision. So we'll add our sprite back in, just for the fun of it, and we'll put it as a new sprite. And, well, it's a new dot, actually. Um, and then what happens is we're going to get the collision so that way it's going to get that and it's get component and it's going to get the sprite renderer of the dot and then you have your brackets and then your dot and then you're going to add a sprite to that and then we'll have it equals um, the new dot. So that's just showing you, you can code, you can get use the get component part to get the component and then you can code to it also to all the components in that component. So now we've added a square to the dot. When it comes across, it turns into a square and it all works. So that, that's a bit of a wrap up now of accessing 
all these things. I hope you guys have learned something. I'm going to be doing this again next week. So subscribe, stick around, um, like, comment, anything you just want to know, I'm happy to help. And see you next week.